Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners. I plead your blood on this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. There's so many <clears throat> full of fear. We got to get that fear gone. Cast it out in the name of Jesus. Now, it's as simple as that. Cast it out in the name of Jesus. And all that's associated with it, cast it out. Plead the blood of Jesus over you and your life and, and your thoughts and your heart and your feelings. Plead the blood of Jesus. Now, what you do is, is you go and you grow up in God. You grow up in God. Look who's here. <laughs> mow, mow. She got to get in the video, y'all. <laughs> My mow, mow. You grow up in God. You know, Abraham, he, he realized that. I want you to go to Romans chapter 4, verse 19. Now, I'm not just telling y'all to read the word for nothing. You read the word because that's where you grow. That's your strength. That's where you learn to let God into your life, y'all. I'm serious about this. Things are going to happen in life that we're going to be afraid of and we can't handle it. But when we understand God and his word, we can handle it. Okay? When you learn to depend on God, then you can handle it. Whatever it is. You know, one thing you got to forget about is your body. Okay, and I mean, take care of it. Yeah, it's God's temple. But I'm talking about don't worry yourself to death about what's going to happen to your body. Well, what if they cut my arm off? What if they cut my hand? Who don't sit there and worry about that. Jesus said, don't worry about what they can do to your body. Because your body, every single one of you and me, this body is going to go back to dust. This body is not going to last us very much longer anyway. Y'all, it's our eternal soul that we have to focus on that will never die. Okay, Abraham realized that. What did he do? Go to uh, 419, the Romans. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. Already dead, since he was 100 years old, about 100 years old, he figured he's already about dead anyway. And, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, she can't have any children at that time. OK, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith by giving glory to God. So he knew that he was running out of time. His body, his body. OK, Sarah couldn't produce children at that time. You know, he didn't worry about what was going to happen to his body. And he was strengthened in God's word by reading and studying and praying and trusting God in everything he read. When he read it, he believed it. And Jesus said to be saved, you must be a believer. You must believe the words he writes in God's word. You must be, believe the words in this book. That those are promises. They are. They are promises for you. So if you read it and he tells you something, then believe it. That's God talking to you. Okay? So you believe it. If you believe, you're saved. If you believe, you're doing what he tells you to do in his word. Everything he tells you to do because you're believing it. That he said, if you do this, you will be saved. If, if you love me, you will do this. If you love me, you will do this. If you love me, you will do that. That makes you a believer when you do what, what he tells you to do if you love him. You become a doer of his word. Okay? So Abraham did. So he didn't waver in his faith, okay? He didn't, he didn't have unbelief about, well, he didn't worry about his body. You know, if they hurt, if they, if they kill my body, they kill it because that's, that's going to go anyway. It ain't guaranteed you, it ain't going to last you long. But your soul will never die. And what you do is you give God your faith. You give God your faith. It's just like that. You make your mind up. Now, if there's things interfering in your faith, like medications or stuff like that, then then you can work that out, you know, with you and your doctor or whatever. I don't know, but there's some of the medication. All of them. I'm talking about some of them are are from witchcraft, y'all. And you know which ones I'm talking about. They get a grip on your life, y'all. They get a grip on you that controls how you think, what you do, how you feel. They get that kind of grip that interferes with God. So if you have an addiction to something like that. Uh, go straighten it out. I did. You can do it. I didn't think I could do it. I did it. You could do it. You got to make your mind up. God gives you more strength than you realize that you have. You got to use it. And it could be a little tough, but you get through it, y'all. 
It's called enduring. You get through whatever it is that's keeping you back from God and his will for you. When you rely and trust in the Holy Spirit and you go seek him, you want to beat fear? You want to beat fear? Build your faith in God. That's the only thing going to take that fear out of you is the Holy Spirit. Okay. Said he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith by what? By giving glory to God. That means doing the will of God. Everything he tells you to do. Studying his word all the time. Giving God praise and worship all the time. Praying to God all the time. Tell God you love him. Talk to him. Include him in your life. I say this in every video, y'all. Every, every single one. So that's how he was strengthened in his faith and, faith. and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. So don't doubt the promises of God. Abraham was not perfect, y'all. He was an ordinary man with faults and shortcomings, just like we are. However, he did not waver the promises of God through unbelief, like I just read you in verse 20. For 10 years, Abraham continued to believe God's promise that he would have a child through Sarah. For 10 years, he was old. He's like, oh, you say it, I believe it. <laughs> Even though the physical circumstances looked impossible, Abraham's faith grew stronger rather than weaker. Did you hear me? Even though the physical circumstances looked impossible, Abraham's faith grew stronger instead of weaker because God promised it. That's why he had that much faith in God. Okay, I've been trying to teach you all the past few days about the agape love. Agape love is, is godly love. Love like God, heart like God, okay? And we've been doing it here. We've been doing the Google Meets. And when you're obeying God, you have that agape love, helping the people, uh, giving God time of your day, reaching out to the Lord, praying for people, praying with people, um, studying his word, trying to please God on a daily basis by doing things he says to do, Okay? You become getting that agape love because that's what Jesus did. He came here for the people. What he did was for the people. What he did was for you specifically, individually. Okay? And we can't do exactly what he did. Well, we we can't say. I mean, we could do, we could go through what he went through. Okay? Because he was a mere man when he went through it. But we can't save the people like he can do. We can't do that. But we can... Um, go through him and have faith in the promises that what he did is going to work for us. It's going to save us for eternity. Okay, that's the promise you stand on. But some of the sufferings he went through, you have to go through it. But because it teaches you that agape love, if you don't do some suffering for God, then you don't know what real love is. If you don't go through some kind of suffering for God, and he'll take you through that sometimes, y'all, to teach you that agape love. But he's teaching you also during that time how to endure with him, how to use him to help you endure. He's showing you, you're not going to be able to endure anything without me. <clears throat> That's what he's teaching you. That's one of the things he's teaching you. One of the main things God wants to teach his people is how to live with agape kind of love. Agape means undefeatable benevolence. An unconquerable goodwill that always seeks the highest good of the other person, no matter what he does. It's a self-giving love that gives freely without asking anything in return. Okay, and it, and it does not consider the worth of its object. Agape is more a love by choice which is a love by chance or human emotion. It refers to the will rather than the emotion. Okay, agape describes the unconditional love God has for the world. And God wants to teach his people to love with agape kind of love that comes from choosing with our will to let the Holy Spirit love others through us. Okay? He, you know, let me tell you, human love always comes up empty. 
and is dependent on moods and feelings. We all know that's true. Agape love draws on the resources of the Holy Spirit in order to love the way God loves people. If you're not in God's word and seeking God and building your relationship with God and doing God's word, doing it, the things it tells you to do, then you, can, you won't get that agape love. But when you do, you will grow into that agape love. He's teaching you that. It's very important to God. Love God with all your heart. Number one, God said. Number two, love others like you love yourself because people are very selfish and God knows that. People are very selfish. God said, number two, love others like you love yourself. That's agape love. So the reality is that God's supernatural love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. There is no reason for us to have uh, stingy and small hearts towards other people, y'all. Let's face it. Our own human love is hot and cold, and it easily runs out. But the kind of love that God gives us called agape, it doesn't depend on our feelings or desires, y'all. It's totally unselfish love that's always available, always freely given. Okay, so those of you that are asking me about do a lesson on fear, do a lesson on conquering fear, I do it every day, every single day. Everything I teach you, y'all, is what God tells me to teach you. Everything I teach you, go through whatever video you want. It all leads up to the same thing, growing up in God, growing your faith in God, depending on God, growing a closer relationship to Jesus Christ. Every video I do, I just break it down in little sections, make it easier for you, give you daily things to do different days. But by the time you're done, you done grew up so much in God that you, you just learned to build your faith yourself with Jesus Christ. You're learning to depend on the Holy Spirit. Okay, so take every lesson I do because it comes from God, every lesson I do and do them. I'm trying to help you here, grow that faith and get rid of that fear because I can't cast out your fear. Perfect love casts out fear. And you got to learn that agape love by putting God first in your life. Put him first. Be obedient to what he tells you to do. Love him with all your heart. Y'all, and we're at the end of the rope road here, and he chose you, whoever's listening, he chose you to be here in this world today. You may not see any good in your life, or I don't see nothing I could do for God's kingdom, but when you fill up with God and start seeking him and get serious with him, you'll know. He'll, he'll bring it up to the forefront because he has you here for a reason, and it's all for him. Whatever he wants you to do, you just got to go after him and start seeking him, and when he's ready, he's raising you up for whatever he has you here for. And he has each one of us here for this very time. So you must have to start thinking God has you here for these days. So he must have you here for something mighty big in his kingdom to choose us for these days. But you're going to have to be like that army soldier I'm talking about in my Google Meets. You're going to have to be a soldier. They don't go through boot camp and, and learn all that tough training and then go out on the front lines and hide behind a rock. They go out and fight. They put their armor on. Jesus said, be like that in my word and grow in your relationship with me. Put that armor on and stand up with the angels. Stand up tall and fight that spiritual battle. But you're going to need to grow up in me and get the armor on to do it. What's the armor? It's praying, studying, building your faith in God. It's everything I've been telling y'all to do is putting the armor on. Okay, you can go through my videos. I got many studies about the armor. All right. I think it's in Ephesians chapter 5, I believe, top of my head. But that is your armor. Praying, studying, worshiping, living, doing, obeying God. All that is getting your armor on. Learn to live that way. Don't just do it for a week or two. Learn to live that way. Change your life. Let the Holy Spirit change your life, y'all. Let him come in. Get rid of some junk that's standing in your way. You got something in your life? If, if you read the Bible and it starts making you feel bad, or it's called convicting you. God's trying to tell you, you need to change this. You need to change that. That's God talking to you. When you feel that conviction, that's God talking to you. Okay. So uh, tonight on Google Meets, 
Uh, we're going to roll it at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Not going to stay on too long tonight, y'all, but tonight's going to be testimony night. If you And that's where we're going to keep it tonight, testimony night. I want everybody to give something that Jesus has done for you. Jesus needs to be lifted up, and others need to hear something good God has done for you. Okay? That's what tonight's going to be. All right? Uh, I pray for each one of y'all. Just listen to my videos, y'all. Everything I do comes from God, and it's trying to help you grow. All of it's super important. All right? In Jesus' name, I pray for y'all. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, just ask him to save you. Ask him to save you and say, fill me with the Holy Spirit. If you mean it, it's done instantly. Now start growing in him. Start growing so he can train you into what he's got you here for. And it's, it's a process, but you just do it. Let him work with you. All right? In Jesus' name, God bless each one of y'all. Um, the same code to get in Google Meets. You can find it on my community page. Scroll a couple down. You'll see the code. It's the same code. All right. Thank you all for what you've done. In Jesus' name, God bless each one of you.